I hate ads and you do too, so make sure to use an ad block and sponsor block in your browser or mobile app. I work very hard to make content and if you'd like to donate, head to my Ko-Fi and make a one-time donation or get a membership to have your name in videos. Thanks for watching. I need to get in the server room. This is the server room. If I can get in here, I can stop it. I can stop this horrible thing. And it will all just be a dream. This is this illegal? It's for the greatest good. Oh! He's done it! It was so easy! Oh my god! Uh, should I open? Yeah. I think there's a reason they can Oh shit. Hello. I'm Bill Gates, chairman of Microsoft. Fucking what do we do? You're going to I... see the future. <laughs> Windows. Sorry. We're gonna go. Oh, <laughs> there must be another way, right? You know when things get harder, there's no other way. There seems like there's no way out and you lose hope. Learn XQD. Once upon a time, during the early 90s, Linus Torvalds was attending the University of Helsinki whilst using Minix, an educational operating system that which is essentially a clone of Unix. Torvalds wanted to remotely connect to a system on campus using a terminal program, but quickly discovered that, uh, well, Minix didn't have a terminal. Why is this computer so slow? Disappointed and inspired, Torvalds went to work on developing his very own terminal emulator. At some point along the way, Torvalds kinda just decided fuck it and went batshit crazy, and he began to work on his very own kernel, part of what would in the coming years become the Linux that we know today. Fast forward over 30 years later, and PewDiePie, the man famous for screaming at barrels, Destroy all the barrels! Yeah! Not hating black people, oh, for fuck's sake. No, no. No. Nope. Becoming a national threat to the entirety of India, marrying an Italian. Do you like it? No one wants to see you dance. Please stop. And playing Minecraft with Jack. I am Steve <laughs> fucking Black. Down here, but you're fine. Wait, why do you have all the <laughs> Decided to try his hand at Linux. And oh boy, what a wave he has caused. So many nine-year-old prepubescent tablet kids have been exposed to the holy light of Linux. And so many of them will learn to use Linux, grow huge unkempt beards, and get really what? fucking fat. So now a simple question. If PewDiePie is using Linux, should you use Linux? Well, I mean, let's just back up here and go through his video. The first reason that Felix Ch <laughs> I'm not fucking saying that, cites as to why he began using Linux in spite of Windows is because Windows talks to me like I'm a baby. And I'm hard pressed not to agree with him. Approved. Windows is simple, the UI is simple, but that's also its biggest drawback when you're using your computer in certain ways. I explained this in this video, so I'll gloss over it kind of briefly. But essentially, Windows's reliance on UI makes it much more difficult to complete tasks that either require lots of steps in a sequence or require fine granular control of your system. For example, let's say that I have a bunch of files that are labeled as either gay or straight. And let's say that I want to organize these files into folders that match their respective designation. You know, segregate the gays and the straights, because that's just very ethically just of me to do. If I want to do that on Windows, then, well, I'm kind of fucked. Because not all of the gay files start with the same letter, nor do the straight files. So unless I want to spend eternity manually dragging and dropping every individual file, I am boned. Now, what if I do have the patience to segregate people based on their sexual orientation manually? Okay, well, let's add something new to the mix. Yeah, we're doing this. All of the sudden, I'm dazed and confused and I give up on my fascist utopia. The dream is truly dead. 
Then comes Linux, and things become a lot easier. I managed to cobble together a command that kind of just organizes it all for me. Wow, fascism has never been so easy. Thanks, Linux. This is but one example of how efficient the terminal on Linux can be for any old task so long as you know what you're doing. It's not as difficult as one would think. Not only that, but Windows's baby design didn't hold us back. Now, if you're asking yourself, Okay, why not just use PowerShell on Windows to get the same tasks done? Well, it's not that simple. PowerShell can be used in many of the same ways that Bash, which is the most popular Linux shell, can be used. However, for general system usage, which is what 99% of you watching this video do, Bash is for all intents and purposes much easier and faster to get into. Windows compared to Linux is bloated, and as a result, PowerShell is bloated and slower as well. Like, like really fucking slow. And again with regards to what PewDiePie said about Windows treating you like a baby. It really does. When you're bombarded by ads on the start menu, random prompts telling you your password has expired for some reason, and update notifications urging you to pick an option to which you just click remind me later for the umpteenth fucking time, you get kind of tired of being pushed around and bothered on your own computer. And PewDiePie also makes a point in the realm of freedom. Linux, on the other hand, literally puts a gun in your hand and says, Linux lets you do whatever the flying fuck you want with your system, no matter the cost, no matter the risk, no matter how destructive. That has got to be the gayest jacket I've ever seen. And no matter how permanent. Oh, oh no, oh, oh no, 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 oh god, no, no, no! It is a common meme among the Linux community to disseminate all manner of destructive commands, those of which either hard crash or completely destroy your system. For all intents and purposes, Linux is your son, <laughs> and you are his daddy. <laughs> Another reason PewDiePie cites is, you guessed it, bloat. bloat. Now to begin with, bloat is a catch-all term for what can only be described as useless, superfluous, or unnecessary performance sapping bullshit on your computer. Windows is the prime example of bloat, as despite being an operating system priced at over $100, it comes prepackaged with applications that you're probably never going to use. It also, um, for lack of a better word, uh, lustfully molests your eyeballs with advertisements and other nonsense. Windows runs a litany of background processes, not all of which are even necessary to run your system, but many of which are designed for the express purpose of stealing, monitoring, and collecting your personal data in every way possible. So if we wanted to actually open paint... Oh, instant hit there. Positive, but that felt too convenient. Okay. Oh. Meta services. These processes cannot be turned off without extensive modification of Windows, which is inherently invasive, as Windows is a closed source operating system, so it's not even entirely known which processes are necessary to run the system and which aren't. The song and dance of removing bullshit from Windows also takes a really long time. And of course, the most important aspect of such processes is that they make your system slow, fat, slothful, sluggish. My shoe came off. Sloppy, fat, and did I mention it makes your computer like incredibly fucking slow? Yeah, it's kind of important, especially if you're running on a system that isn't exactly modern. It's got a 1.3 gigahertz Core 2 Duo, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and it currently runs Windows 7. But today, we're gonna try to put Windows 11 on it. Just using Windows 11 has not been a very pleasant experience. I mean, even just downloading Firefox and Steam was a pretty miserable process, to be honest. You see, we're using 74% of our memory just sitting here idle right now. A couple years back, I purchased this ThinkPad X61 for a mere $20, a mid-range, dual-core, dual-threaded CPU from 2007. The website itself felt snappy, and video playback worked flawlessly at up to 720p. To note that opening multiple browser tabs 
is also completely doable. Here, I have 10 websites fully loaded, and only 1700 megabytes of RAM are being- That just makes no fucking sense. I mean, it's just bullshit. This is why Linux is hailed for breathing new life into older systems, as on older systems, Windows runs so much Mickey Mouse fuck shit that doing so much as opening Windows Explorer feels like trudging through a murky lagoon of human waste with Vaseline over your eyeballs. To put it simply, not fun. And to those of you asking about something like Atlas OS or using some sort of program to de-bloat Windows, you might want to watch this video to gain a bit of insight on why it's not really entirely safe or practical in the long run. The third reason PewDiePie mentioned in his video for liking Linux was the customization, or as it's often known and mentioned in his video, rising. What PewDiePie said is entirely true. The GUI you use for your system, meaning the look of it, can be changed entirely if one desires. You can choose from relatively simplistic desktop environments like GNOME or MATE to extremely involved window managers that you'll need to rise all on your own from the bottom up. What the fuck? This is Many times writing it straight with code, with one extreme example being DWM. If you were a madman, you could even decide to use your system without any graphical interface to speak of, straight from the terminal, which is named Headless. Regardless of what you choose though, you're almost always going to have more options to customize your experience compared to Windows. The power is yours. Embrace it if you dare. The fourth reason brought up is that gaming on Linux is finally real! Yes, baby! For a very long time, Linux was deemed by many to be unsuitable for their sophisticated use case because of its lack of game compatibility. Beauty Man included. Oh, I can't use the things I need on Linux. And for me, that was gaming back then because it's like, well, then what's the point? <laughs> but now, after years of refinement by the gods who reside within the walls of Valve's headquarters, most games, even many of the latest and greatest ones, are available to be played on Linux with relatively little hassle. Proton, which is a compatibility tool based on Wine, remember? not an emulator, has hit the ground running, and it's allowed Linux to thrive in the last few years with regards to gaming. The best thing is, the situation is only gonna get better as more and more people switch to Linux, since more will be contributing to the effort and developers will be forced to see Linux as a worthy platform to, well, develop for. Thank you, Pat. Um, I might let you out of the prison, not really sure on the fence about it, but besides Patrick being in prison inside of my home, don't send him help, he's fine. PewDiePie makes quite a strong point for Linux. It is viable and very usable in today's world for, well, many of the general use cases that most people are going to worry about. And if you're not convinced by this video, well then try it yourself with something like Linux Mint and come back to me when you're addicted and you've gained about 100 pounds at the minimum. Well, that will be all. That has been Lernix and our special guest Patrick28. Um, don't die tomorrow. Well, it's, I can't, it's out of my control. I don't, I can't really, it's, I don't know. Fucking, maybe you do die tomorrow. I don't want you to die tomorrow, but like, it's in God's hands, whatever. It, <sighs> bye.